Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Flockin' Around. I am sorry that we have not been uploading as consistently as we would like to. The weather's been pretty awful, uh, January in northern New York. <laughs> Um, and our lighting inside the coops is pretty bad, so not great for taking videos. But, uh, it's in the third, okay, it's like high 20s today. So it is warm enough for the birds to get out a little bit. And today we have the breeding flock out. Right now we're watching Miss Bellis, who is a two-year-old hen. Uh, she is second generation from my, in my line. And she is... The second oldest hen I have um, of the Orloffs. And she's getting a good dust bath on. She only recently finished up a molt, so her tail is really short still, which is kind of silly. But she's laying well, so. And here we have Miss Dandelion, who is one of, who is getting very close to the camera. Uh, she is one of my latest generation birds. She, let me think. She is, I want to say, third generation in my flock. Uh, she is nine months old. She is the youngest in the breeding group right now. But she's old enough that she's laying hen sized eggs. Uh, see, when pullets start laying, a pullet being a hen under one year old, uh, they lay very small eggs initially and those are not good for hatching the chicks you know they don't have enough room to grow in the egg very well so they come out smaller and tend to be not as strong but once their eggs increase in size which usually takes two to three months from when they start laying then they are safe to hatch from usually and of course next to her is daffodil and he is he is also nine months old, and he is the second highest ranking rooster in the flock. Very, he's a really nice example of an Orloff. I'm very proud of him. He is third generation in my line too. You can see his upright. <laughs> Here we have Tulip. Tulip is, let me think, also third generation in my line. She's actually a half sister to Dandelion. And she was hen raised, so she's kind of uh, not as human friendly as the others tend to be, but she's still pretty friendly. She's hitting behind. <laughs> And although she has some traits that I'd like to correct, uh, Daffy will actually help correct a lot of it in her. Uh, she's a very good example still. Her neck's a little short, her body's a little more compact, but that comes from uh, the line that her mother came at, well, her grandmother is from. Um, they're just a more petite shaped bird, even though they're still, you know, a six pound hen. And she is one year old. She is Blossom's daughter. And if you notice, she has a crooked toe. Uh, that did not come from her breeding or anything like that. That happened when she got a nasty injury on that toe. And it's healed up pretty well. Like, she doesn't have any issues walking or anything. But she can't be shown but she's still a beautiful bird and it doesn't really give her any issues and they're just this is a breeding quad quad meaning that there are three hens and one cock or cockerel uh, cockerel is a cock under a year old I have one breeding pen set up, so I only can do one breeding group at a time right now. And this is obviously an all spangled group, so all of their babies will be spangled or lofts. Daffy has an exceptionally good temperament. 
is very, very mild mannered, very good with the hens, so they absolutely love him, so we should have good fertility. Um, he's not too hard on them, he works very hard to impress them, he builds nests, finds treats, and he gets along well with other roosters. So that's exactly the kind of temperament I like in uh, in my males in my program. I don't want them to be aggressive towards other roosters. I don't want them to be nasty with hens. I don't know how he is with chicks yet. Uh, he was good with the younger group, but they were only a few months young. Er, not a few. Uh, I don't know he knew them when they were youngsters, and he was good with them. So overall, just. <laughs> Really good temperament, really solid bird. He did well at the show. He was a, uh, one show he's been to. He was a little stressed, but not bad. It was his first show, so they're always a little weirded out by that. They're alarm calling because there is a crow flying over. They're very happy to get out and about and run around. The uh, growl noise that they're making is a um, sort of less alarmed alert sound. Hey, like, hey, there might be danger, but we're not super, <coughs> super worried about it right now. It's just, hey, that might be danger, so, like, pause what you're doing for a moment so we can assess it. But then they go back to their activities because they don't raise a further alarm, so it's like, oh, okay, you know, we're good. I have 22 eggs from this group in the incubator right now. Each incubator that I have holds 22. I'm hoping to save up for a cabinet incubator, which will hold more than that, but, uh, uh I don't really... Oh, another alarm call. This breeding group has been together for about three weeks now. And you can see the hens, uh, they aren't getting worn, they're not losing feathers or anything, even though they're uh, definitely squatting for Daffy because he does he's not overzealous, which is really nice. And I'll keep them together for probably two more months. Uh, or, yeah, probably about two more months. Um, they're, pick they're kicking up the egg production as the daylight gets longer. So right now... Each of them is probably giving me four eggs a week, and there are three of them. So that's about, you know, twelve a week. And I sell eggs by the dozen. Uh, I'm not selling eggs right now uh, because I'm collecting eggs for hatching instead as I have some uh, chick orders on my wait list. So I fulfilled the chick orders first, but not until after I hatch my own to make sure they all come out healthy and everything. And then once the chick orders are fulfilled, um, then, then I start the egg orders. And once I'm done fulfilling uh, the waitlist orders for those, 
Uh, I'll give, I'll move the girls out of the breeding pen. They'll get a break. And then in a little bit, I'm going to move uh, my two mahogany pullets in with Daffy to start working on producing a, uh, bet a, a good mahogany breeding group. I have one mahogany cockerel, that's sumac, and two mahogany hens, Echinacea and Dahlia, but they are all direct siblings, they're 100% siblings, so I do not <coughs> want to breed them because that eventually leads to decreased fertility, and uh, honestly they won't complement each other very nicely. Oh my god, G great job Daffy. I love Warlock. <coughs> But they're not always super bright. <laughs> Roosters pretty much crow constantly uh, because their crowing isn't contrary to popular belief. They don't just crow when the sun rises to announce that it's morning. <coughs> they crow all day because they use it as a form of communication. Um, they use it to locate other roosters, to announce their presence, to uh, announce territory and things like that so that other roosters know that they are around. And they also, I've seen them crow when they're trying to get attention, when something is amiss. So I feel like there are a lot of different meanings to a crow, and maybe there are little nuances in the notes <coughs> they use or something. Uh, I don't know. Because we can't speak chicken super well, the best we can do is speculate. And of course, you know, there are behavioral studies for studying chicken language. We know that they have distinct words that mean things, which is pretty amazing. We know they have words for specific types of predators. <coughs> and when I say words, I mean, you know, vocalizations in general. They have a specific one for aerial predators. It actually kind of sounds like they're saying hawk. Um, which means, you know, get to cover, and then usually the roosters will stay out so that they can keep an eye on things and get all the hens to safety. Uh, they have a specific one for snakes, I have observed. A uh, sound that they only make when they are presented with a snake. And they have a specific one for <coughs> ground predators. And I'm sure it all has to do with telling one another how to respond to keep the flock safe because keep they're a highly social species so keeping the flock safe is the priority <coughs> and part of why I like having multiple uh, cocks and cockerels in a flock is oh he's going to go find dandy is because they work together really well to protect the flock so like often um, the young bird, when there's danger, a lot of times what we've observed is that the young ro the young cockerels will go under shelter with the hens, but stay on the border of the shelter, um, sort of to act, you know, as security to keep anything from getting to the hens. And then the more mature birds will stay out and uh, will be prepared to be the first line of defense, basically. And then it's the more mature older birds who give the all clear, which makes sense. They're more experienced, so they should be better at assessing when a threat is passed. And it's it's really fascinating watching them interact. We used to buy into the one rooster per flock rule, um, but honestly, uh, I don't remember our first flock super well because I was just a toddler, but our second flock... Um, my babe, my rooster Klondike was phenomenal, but he would run himself ragged because he had about 10 hens that he was looking after 
and he was so busy trying to run between the different m micro flocks that the hens form that he started losing weight because he just wasn't eating. Um, and he he did a lot better when we added another bird, even though the second uh, cockerel we added, uh, Duke, was not very smart. Uh, they worked really well together and they were able to maintain their weight better and sort of take shifts. So now we really like having uh, a mixed flock with multiple birds. Not not in the breeding flock, obviously, because <laughs> I need to know who the parents are. But uh, in the main flocks, when it's not breeding time, they all just run together. I try to maintain, for the large fowl, I like a 1 to 3 or 1 to 4 ratio of cocks to hens. The bantams, honestly, are okay with like a 1 to 1 or 1 to 2 ratio. And the roosters keep each other from overmounting the hens pretty well. These guys are outside of the porch. Not sure what they're doing. Dandy is really hyper. They're so sick of being cooped up. They're a very cold hardy breed, my Orloffs are. But when there's a lot of snow on the ground, they can't really get out because they don't like walking through it. Their <laughs> chickens do not have good depth perception. So when there is snow on the ground, it makes it really hard for them to tell where it's safe to walk. I, I actually... Um, I cheat sometimes, and when I want good photos of them standing still, um, I'll put them in the snow <laughs> because they'll just kind of stand still and be confused, but they'll stand upright and alert, so they look really good. And of course, you know, then they go right back in. We actually had a professional photographer come out the other day because we got a uh, coupon that took more than half of the cost for a set of portraits off and got some really good photos, I think. We haven't, uh, she's still processing them and working her photographer magic. Um, but uh, I think we got some really good shots of, well, the turkeys and the breeding flock here, and my mahogany trio. So I'm excited to see those, and uh, I have her permission to share them on, on my uh, face, on the Equinox Giants Farm Facebook page which you guys are very free to visit. I keep it updated with uh, availability and just general photos of the flock and things like that. Well, almost uh, out of time. The uh, we do twenty minute clips. Um, oh, Dandy came back in. Um, sorry for not being super consistent with the uploads. We'll <laughs> we'll get better about it, especially as the weather starts to get better, because um, the birds get out more, and of course the lighting's better outside, and you get to see their natural behaviors when they're acting as a flock better. Um, videos will be very fun when it's spring. Because they are always very active in spring. There's, you know, there are bugs out, so they're hunting. They're establishing ranks. Um, they're seeing each other after a winter. Like the Orloff flock and the Bantam flock are separate during the winter, so they get to see each other again. And it's always a very, uh, very busy time of year. Plus, we will be having babies soon. Um, in about three weeks, uh, babies will be hatching out, so we will be doing some extra special baby videos of the cutest, okay, I guess arguably, <laughs> arguably the cutest baby chicks in the world, Orloff babies. I just, Orloff babies and turkey babies are the absolute cutest things to me. Um, and uh, actually we might get some turkey baby videos later this summer. Uh, not from my flock, because my flock's too young right now, but I don't want to 
spoil the surprise. I mean, it's not really a surprise, but... Um, okay, we're almost out of time, so uh, thanks for watching. As always, please like and subscribe, and have a good uh, day.